Hello students, this is Pathology Chapter 4, Part 1. Infectious Diseases. This chapter covers bacterial infections, fungal infections, and viral infections. Humoral immunity, or antibodies, is an effective defense against some microorganisms. Cell-mediated immunity, such as T-cell lymphocytes, is an effective defense against others, such as intracellular bacteria, viruses, and fungi. Bacterial infections that will be covered in this chapter include impetigo, tonsillitis and pharyngitis, tuberculosis, actinomycosis, syphilis, necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis, pericoronitis, acute osteomyelitis, and chronic osteomyelitis. Impetigo is a bacterial skin infection caused by Streptococcus pyogenes and Staphylococcus aureus. It is usually seen in young children and requires non-intact skin for infection. It is very infectious. Treatment includes topical or systemic antibiotics. Tonsillitis and pharyngitis are inflammatory conditions of the tonsils and pharyngeal mucosa. Clinical features may include sore throat, fever, tonsillar hyperplasia, and erythema of the oropharyngeal mucosa and tonsils. It may be spread by contact with infectious nasal or oral secretions. It is caused by group A beta hemolytic streptococci, which also cause scarlet fever and rheumatic fever. Scarlet fever usually occurs in children. It involves a fever and a generalized red skin rash caused by a toxin released by the bacteria. Oral manifestations in addition to streptococcal tonsillitis and pharyngitis include petechiae on the soft palate and a strawberry tongue. The strawberry tongue is caused by fungiform papillae that are red and prominent with the dorsal surface of the tongue exhibiting either a white coating or erythema. Rheumatic fever is a childhood disease that follows a group A beta hemolytic streptococcal infection. It is characterized by an inflammatory reaction involving the heart, joints, and the central nervous system. Heart valve damage may occur from rheumatic fever. This may require that the patient be pre-medicated before dental hygiene treatment. Bacterial infections, tuberculosis, is usually caused by the organism Mycobacterium tuberculosis. There are rare oral ulcerations which are painful, non-healing, and slowly enlarge. Signs and symptoms of tuberculosis include fevers, chills, fatigue, malaise, weight loss, persistent cough. Miliary tuberculosis is widespread. Scrofula or tuberculous lymphadenitis is enlargement of the submandibular and cervical lymph nodes. The oral lesions biopsied will show chronic granulomatous lesions with areas of necrosis surrounded by macrophages, multinucleated giant cells, and lymphocytes. Tests for tuberculosis include a skin test and chest radiographs. An increase has been reported in the number of both reported cases and cases that are resistant to standard drug regimens. Tuberculosis incidence has been related to HIV infection and increased immigration from countries where tuberculosis is endemic. 
It is considered an occupationally transmitted disease in dentistry. Standard precautions can prevent transmission. If the patient has active tuberculosis, routine treatment can be deferred. Use of a special mask is recommended to prevent transmission. Combination medications including isoniazid INH, and rifampin are prescribed for the treatment of tuberculosis. The treatment may continue for months or even years. The patient's physician should be consulted to determine whether the patient is infectious. Actinomycosis is an infection caused by a filamentous bacterium, Actinomyces israeli. The appearance clinically is a draining abscess. Treatment is long-term using high doses of antibiotics. Syphilis is caused by a spirochete, Treponema pallidum. Organisms die when exposed to air and changes in temperature. Syphilis is transmitted by direct contact, sexual contact, and transfusion of infected blood to a fetus from infected mother. The stages of syphilis and the oral lesions associated with them. Primary syphilis will show an oral canker. Secondary will have a mucus patch. Latent has no oral lesion and tertiary will exhibit a guma. Here are some images of the primary stage of syphilis. This is the chancre. The secondary stage will show diffuse eruptions on skin and mucous membranes and mucus patches in the oral lesions that appear as multiple painless grayish-white plaques covering ulcerated mucosa. These lesions are the most infectious. They undergo spontaneous remission but may recur for months or years. The tertiary stage of syphilis chiefly involves the cardiovascular system and the nervous system. The guma is a firm mass which is non-infectious. It is a destructive lesion that can result in perforation of the palatal bone. Treponema pallidum can cross the placenta and enter the fetal circulation. It causes serious, irreversible damage to the child, including facial and dental abnormalities. These are Turner's incisors and mulberry molars, which are typical of congenital syphilis. Lesions on skin may be identified by dark field microscopy, Blood tests include a venereal disease research laboratory test known as the VDRL and fluorescent treponemal antibody absorption test, FTA-ABS. It is treated with penicillin. Necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis, or NUG, is a painful erythematous gingivitis with necrosis of the interdental papillae. It is most likely caused by both a fusiform bacillus and a spirochete known as Borrelia vincenti. It is associated with decreased resistance to infection. Diagnosis. Necrosis results in cratering of the interdental papillae. Sloughing of necrotic tissue causes a pseudomembrane to form over the tissue. Treatment involves gentle debridement and antibiotics if fever is present. Pericoronitis is inflammation around the crown of a partially erupted impacted tooth. It is most commonly seen on lower third molars. Trauma from an opposing molar as well as impacted food under the soft tissue flap known as the operculum may precipitate the inflammation. Treatment for P. 
pericoronitis include mechanical debridement, irrigation of the pocket, systemic antibiotics, and often the long-term solution is removal of the offending tooth. Acute osteomyelitis is an acute inflammation of the bone and bone marrow, which is most commonly the result of a periapical abscess. It may follow a fracture of bone and may also result from a bacteremia. Diagnosis is the uh, existence of non-viable bone, necrotic debris, acute inflammation, and bacterial colonies in the marrow spaces. Treatment involves drainage of the purulent exudate and antibiotics. Chronic osteomyelitis is a long-standing inflammation of bone. The involved bone is painful and swollen. Radiographs reveal a diffuse and irregular radiolucency that can eventually become opaque. This is known as chronic sclerosing osteomyelitis when a radiopacity develops in the bone. Treatment includes debridement, administration of systemic antibiotics, and some patients may require hyperbaric treatment. Fungal infections include candidiasis, deep fungal infections, and mucormycosis. Candidiasis is the outcome of a, an overgrowth of candida albicans. This can result from many different conditions, antibiotics, chemotherapy, corticosteroids, dentures, diabetes, HIV, hypoparathyroid, infancy, multiple myeloma, primary T-cell deficiency, xerostomia, among others. The organisms can be identified in a scraping of the lesion. There are different types of candidiasis, pseudomembranous, erythematous, denture stomatitis, chronic hyperplastic, angular chylitis, chronic mucocutaneous, and median rhomboid glossitis. Erythematous candidiasis. The presenting complaint is of an erythematous, often painful, mucosa, which may be localized to one area of the oral mucosa or be more generalized. In pseudomembranous candidiasis, a white curd-like material is present on the mucosal surface. The mucosa is erythematous underneath, and the patient may complain of a burning sensation and or a metallic taste. Denture stomatitis, also known as chronic atrophic candidiasis, is the most common type of candidiasis. The mucosa is erythematous, but the change is limited to the mucosa covered by a full or partial denture. It is most common on the palate and maxillary alveolar ridge. It is usually asymptomatic. Chronic hyperplastic candidiasis, or candidal leukoplakia, is a white lesion that does not wipe off the mucosa. It will respond to antifungal medication. A lesion that does not respond to antifungal medication should be biopsied. This concludes Pathology, Chapter 4, Part 1.